All right, Joe Biden held a disastrous event yesterday. Maybe, maybe you could say two. We'll break that down in a second. President Trump also delivered a Labor Day address. Washington and Lee University is offering, I would say, a pretty surprising and shocking course, although it kind of falls in line with everything else we're seeing this year. And retired U.S. Army Colonel John Mills stops by to talk voter integrity and everything that has to do with this upcoming election. It all starts now. Tuesday, folks. Damn glad to be with you. Great, great show yesterday. Great shows planned the rest of the week. So thanks for sticking with us. We, we greatly appreciate your viewership. Real quick on that, we've gotten tons of, as you can imagine and see, comments right here on the YouTube channel, obviously on the other platforms as well. But just wanted to let you know that we try to get back to you. I try to get back to you uh, as much as we can. If you don't get responded to and you have an actual question or comment or something that actually elicits a response, uh, it's not that we're ignoring you. It's just literally you can take five, ten minutes off. And because of the overwhelming support that you guys have been giving us, uh, th those comments get buried. So sometimes they get stuck behind. So keep at it. We love we love the feedback. We love the communication with you guys. Uh, just don't be offended if we miss it. It's not it's not personal. It's just, just the problem we're dealing with here. Uh, so quick note before we get into the show. I, I can't wait to do this with Cruise the Headlines or anything else. We just got to talk Biden now. We just got to get it done. Uh, you had Pence out in the trail yesterday. Cam Cam was out as well uh, in Milwaukee. But this, this I just thought this was great. This was this was the scene for Joe Biden yesterday in what was could be described none other as a as a hard hitting, well produced scene. Roll one. You uh, do you think most of those guys are, and women are suckers? <laughs> no, I mean. It's a. Uh, is there any reaction to that? Have you, among because you're in the National Guard now, right? Yes. Okay. Well, look. Let me ask you a couple practical questions. Okay. How did you find the pipe fitter apprenticeship program? Um, I was getting out. They, they had a uh, transition programs for vets. It was a new program that started in Fort Hood, Texas, and I, that was the trade I wanted to uh, go into. I was a welder. And how do civilian employees, uh, what don't they get about uh, the enormous talent veterans offer? I mean, is there a, is there a concern that vet getting out doesn't know what he's doing or she's doing, or is there a large and ours? And so uh, he has just sort of waved the white flag on, on dealing with COVID, and he all he wants to do is just just reopen, but. The way he's reopening is causing us to, uh, you know, shut down. Look what's happening with schools right now. If you have kids trying to get them back in school right now, it's pretty tough. The, um, you know, uh, I, uh, it seems to me that there is uh, things can and should change because for the first time, unions are respected more for the first time than they have been any time in the last 50 years. Over 65 percent of the American people support union movement, support union growth. And so. All right. So there's I mean, there's just so much that we could just do the whole show on this. Um, for, first off, vets are enormously talented. That part of the clip didn't didn't get finished. And and you should believe that. And if you're a company owner out there, small business owner, you know, large business owner, whatever, uh, you should definitely hire them. Don't just because they come from a different field. Uh, it doesn't mean anything. The work ethic, the discipline, everything that comes with them is great. So definitely go out and hire veterans. But but let's let's un unpack this Biden thing here for a second. First off, it's it's at someone's house, so you can't control the setting. Although you you chose it, and, and you and you can control it in that sense of of what you choose and what you don't choose. But it's at someone's house, <laughs> poorly man man uh, manicured lawn, and you know different chairs. You're socially distanced, yet you're all wearing masks. You're outside. But you got to keep up that mask narrative that Biden and Cam Cam have been have been sharing and pushing down people. Um, but then the, the bigger thing is is not the mask. Like, look, if you want to wear a mask again, I don't care. That's your prerogative. You're doing it, Joe, for political reasons and grandstanding. And that's it. But for the rest of you, for the for the normal people out there, do it. Don't do it. Just be respectful of others. And if they have a different opinion than you. 
so be it. Let them do their thing. But, but you've got notes, Joe. You're sitting down having a casual conversation. It's supposed to come off as like this casual fire pit style conversation where you're just shooting the crap with people and you've got notes. And not only do you have notes with like a question or two on them, which would be fine if it's going to be a long event. Like I want to make sure that I hit these or those, but there's lots of detail on them and he has to keep going to it. Had to keep going to it the whole time. Let me, let's, uh, let's make an awkward transition from one topic to another that don't connect at all. Let me consult my notes. All right, here's my question. Like, it just was so sloppy. And when there's so many concerns out there about the fact that he can't think for himself, he can't stay on task, he can't stay on message, and others are having to do it for him, having him out there in a casual setting, incapable of having a normal conversation because he's got to have a tablet of notes in front of him doesn't help the narrative. Like we're going to pick that apart. And again, I don't wish him ill. So what? He's, he can't stay on message anymore. He's, he's got lots of other issues. He's a creep, yada, yada, yada. But I don't care. I still don't wish the man ill, but don't keep carting him out there and expecting him to rally the troops and get people excited. There's no boat parades for Joe Biden because of stuff like this, because of the gaffes, because of 47 years of service and nothing to show for it. But that, that clip there wasn't all Joe gave us that uh, on Monday or earlier this week. He, he also took part in this virtual town hall meeting that was online, you know, like we've seen all throughout COVID with the split screen. Questions were coming in. And sticking with the, the whole concept of, of he has to have notes, he has to have a prompter, he has to have some help to get his response out or his message out, this was a question from someone participating in the, in the virtual town hall and then him pausing and having what seems like a staff member move up the teleprompter for his response. Roll two, we'll see, we'll see what you think. What will your administration do to help them give them that chance? Thank you. Move it up here. You know, there used to be a basic bargain in this country. What, what will we do? Move it up so I can tell her what we'll do. Like, you got to know this stuff. Back to the, to the outdoor conversation with this. If you're the candidate and you know your stance and your policies on issues, these should all be easy. Giving a speech can be tricky, this, that, and the other, although you've got a prompter for a speech, so, so that's, that's really out the door too. But having conversations when people are asking you questions and you're just sharing what's in your heart, that's really easy if you know what's going on. If you know the issues, if you know where you stand on things, and it's becoming more and more apparent that Joe doesn't, it's all anti-Trump, it's all he did a bad job with COVID, so elect me, even though I have a track record of failure, never done anything, and clearly I'm not well. I mean, that's, that's the campaign. But I, I think it's just hilarious that they keep carting him out there, and they keep, they keep calling him on. There was also, uh, this week too, he came out, it was, it was a conversation from before, but the clip's being discussed this week where he's now saying, I can't, we can't constitutionally mandate that everyone nationally wears a mask. He's like, I'm not sure if we can actually do that. And people were calling him on the carpet for it because in multiple speeches before he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mandate a national mask policy. Everyone's going to have to wear them. We're going to get this thing right, yada, yada, yada. And then, of course, when he's called on the car, I, well, I didn't say that. Hold on, man. I didn't say that. Although there's literally clips out there of him saying, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. So he'll get away with all of this. He'll get away with using notes. But you know where he won't get away with it? The debates. Y'all, this is going to be good TV. There's a lot of you boycotting sports. Again, totally behind you if you do. Uh, uh, if you don't, that's fine too. But... Your TV schedule should be a lot lighter right now because shows aren't in production as much. People are boycotting sports. It's just a different year. But don't miss these debates. Don't miss these debates. They are going to be well worth it, uh, assuming they don't figure out a way to weasel their, their way out of them. All right, real quick, been telling you about one of our sponsors, this group out there, Mammoth Nation. You should know about them by now, but I'm going to keep telling you about them. Awesome group. Uh, they're on a mission to get President Trump reelected as well as other GOP members. This, this election, guys, because of the guy you just saw and the people in his ear on the left is so critical. It's so important that we win this election for a myriad of reasons. It's not just Trump versus Biden. It's law and order versus chaos. 
it's the Supreme Court's on the line. There's so much on the line, and it's going to be tough to get it back. So you can play a part. You can do your you you can do your job. Go to MammothNation.com. It's only nineteen dollars a year. It's better than a donation. You get discounts on hotels, shopping, wireless, cable TV, a bunch of other great stuff. But you need to join now so we can get Republican victories this fall. I'm a lifetime member. We know that you will be too. Also, if you join now, you will be entered into a contest uh, automatically just by, by joining. Winners will be announced on Election Day. First prize gets a 65-inch Samsung 4K Ultra High Def Smart TV. You can see it there. Second place gets that Quareg. Uh, color portable, um, excuse me, single serve and croft coffee maker, and then the Soundlink color portable Bose speaker is for third place. So again, those will be announced on election day. Go ahead and enter now, guys. We we need help. Um, it's critical that you do this, and it's an awesome deal because literally your first your annual your annual fee you're going to pay for with discounts that you get over there. So that's mammothnation.com. We need your help. All right, let's dive into it. Let's cruise the headlines. You know how we were talking yesterday, as recent as yesterday, uh, but we do it often, about how it's becoming unclear what you do for schooling. Well, like, what do you do for your kids? We, we know that, that this Marxist, socialist, all these different values have been fed into academia. And they've been pushed down subtly and quietly, now more loudly and deliberately, but... But for the longest time, they, they were there. And we've seen this overtaking the entire education system. And it's worked its way down into textbooks and what have you, even at the, the lower school, elementary, middle school, high school levels and whatnot. So it's a really tricky time. But people have gotten so bold. They've gotten so bold in it. You know, they, they protect professors who say and do awful things at their school in the name of social justice and equality. Although if a conservative professor, that there aren't many, um, out there said something or did something outrageous, they would certainly be canned right away. But this was, I guess it's not surprising because it's 2020, but Washington Lee University in Virginia has come out and it's, or it's been discovered and they've come out and commented since defending it. They have a course that they're going to be offering on how to overthrow a state the class will uh, allow students to have hands-on experience with role-playing scenarios. And it, it basically, in the, the syllabus, uh, it's, it's described as cl uh, classified, um, excuse me, under Writing Seminar 100-18. The class will reward each student with three credits towards graduating and, quote, places each student at the head of a popular revolutionary movement aiming to overthrow a sitting government and forge a better society. How will you attain power? How will you communicate with the masses? How do you plan on improving the lives of people? How do you deal with the past? Which we know the answer to that one. They want to erase it. They're already trying to. But this is a course at a very reputable school. Washington Lee is a good school. I have several friends who went there. I don't know how they feel about this. It can't be overly positive. But, but the left has gotten so bold and so brash with their ideas and their, their goals for this creating this utopian society, which will ultimately lead to the downfall of America, uh, because all of the countries who go with these ideals end up just having a really tough go. I mean, it's not good. But they're pushing for it, and despite backlash, the school's just saying, oh, no, everyone's blowing this out of proportion. No big deal here. No big deal that we're teaching kids how to do what we're actively seeing in the streets across the country right now. It's not like they're teaching this and it could be used in a strategic military or intel capacity should they go down that road you know, propaganda, information operations, that kind of stuff. No, no, no. This is, we're seeing it in the streets. It's happening in America right now. And they're teaching the next generation the best ways to do it while giving them hands-on practical experience. Absolutely ridiculous. I'm telling you, have that, have that discussion with your spouse. Figure out what you're doing for schooling moving forward because it's just going to keep getting worse. It's going to keep changing. We've gone too far to the one side way too far and and you know unless you can figure out a way to start a whole new system or or get rid of all the leadership and influencers at all of these schools which are innumerable you're going to, have to figure out s something else out it's just it's 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 desperate times folks all right speaking of the left hobby lobby 
We all know Hobby Lobby, right? They're under fire again. Liberals were outraged when voters, uh, excuse me, when when store owners um, had a display there. And you can see it if you're not watching. It says USA Vote Trump. But there's, there's display letters, right? And if you've, you've been in a Hobby Lobby, there is so much crap in Hobby Lobby. And I don't say that in a bad way. There's, there's tons of amazing things in Hobby Lobby. But there's stuff everywhere. And obviously there's crafts and there's stuff like that. So there's letters. And... It's not clear still whether a staff member or a store goer took these letters and assembled them on that shelf that way that says USA vote Trump. But the, the, the left is going crazy. They're going crazy about it. You know, and they've already boycotted Hobby Lobby before. Hobby Lobby is very outspoken about their faith. They're, uh, they're a Christian-owned company, which tends to lean conservative as is the case for most believers. Um, and, th- and this should not be surprising. This should not be surprising for Hobby Lobby. But somehow the left is, they're calling for another boycott. Let's boycott them again. Before they were Christians, now they're still Christians. And there's letters arranged on a shelf that might not even be done by the store. And we're not okay with it. And... and and I, what I don't understand about this, and it goes both ways, is how people get so offended when someone else has another opinion. Yeah, you walk into a store, there's going to be damn near 50% of the people in that store, employees, shoppers, whatever, that are conservative. There's going to probably be about the same on the other side that are Democrats or liberals, and a small spattering in between who are just trying to figure out life and see what the, the best deals are at Hobby Lobby that day. But I, I don't understand how you get upset with conservatives, Christians, rational-minded people for being upset with companies that shove social justice. War. Like, people are mad right now on, on the, I don't know if you've noticed, but people are upset with the professional sports leagues. People have, have gotten upset with large corporations individual athletes and stars who have jumped in full bore with the social justice movement, with Black Lives Matter, all this stuff, even though they're doing so blindly and without lots of data and facts that need to be surrounding their their motives, but they're doing it emotionally. And anyone who doesn't come along board is trashed, is, is I mean, it's, it's all, and, and, and you shove it down our throat. So that if you're not getting it here, you go over here. You could go to a restaurant these days, and and someone will come and shove it down. You you got to raise your fist. You got to say this or say that. So it's okay for you to do that. But as soon as someone says something that's different, or someone challenges a company that does something different, you get all up in arms. You get all all pissed off. But really, at the end of the day, this is just guys. This is just people having different opinions. If the store wanted for everyone to vote for Trump, that's their prerogative. If it was a shopper who put that up, okay, that's fine. But if you really have an issue with Hobby Lobby, don't go to Hobby Lobby. It's pretty simple, right? If you don't want to watch the NBA because they're a social justice league with a little bit of sports on the side, don't watch them. I don't. A lot of you don't. I know you don't. But for some reason, folks on the other side can't do that. It's, it's, this is all just cancel culture. If you, if you can't handle different opinions, it's probably best that you just stay inside because we're very divided as a country right now. And you're going to bump into an issue somewhere. So if you can't handle people doing stuff differently than you, thinking differently than you, voting differently than you, stores having different spiritual or political ideologies than you, Again, just stay home. Go somewhere else. Something. But we, we, we got to do better. Also, by the way, I bet Hobby Lobby, who is, whether they did it or not, who is a Christian company, who is a more conservative company, I bet they welcome your boycott. Because you look at what happens with these boy. Look at what happened with Goya. Goya was boycotted for supporting the president. Guess what happened to their sales? They did pretty damn well, right? Yeah, they did. They did just fine. So I'm sure Hobby Lobby, who's proven time and time again that they're going to stand their ground, uh, is a okay with it. And if they get a, a big boost in sales, even better bonus. All right, we've talked about uh, the the hit piece by the Atlantic 
on President Trump. Very interestingly timed. A lot of their other issues are not going well. Their other slams on Trump are not going well. Jobs are looking good. The economy's coming back out. People aren't happy with the unrest and violence in the streets. So they needed something. So they dumped this article, which, by the way, as soon as they dumped the article, I don't know if you noticed this, but a well-timed, no coincidence, of course, but a new ad on the same thread dealing with how he handles the military and intelligence and this, that, and the other was dropped. So I'm sure that, I'm sure it was just a coincidence, but, but that happened. But, we, but we've, we've seen since. We told you yesterday how John Bolton, who does not like President Trump, came out and defended him saying, no, 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 I, that's, that didn't happen. Others have come out and said that, but there's more now. We've got, uh, we've got a tweet here. The ambassador, this is from, I think, Don Jr., right? Yeah, Don Jr. tweeted it out, but the ambassador to France has done the same coming out. He said, I did not hear POTUS call anyone losers when I told him about the weather. Honestly, do you think um, this is actually sorry, this is from um, Zach Fuentes. But but this was Zach Fuentes was a top aide to General John Kelly. Uh, and he came out and said, I did not hear POTUS call anyone losers when I told him about the weather. Honestly, do you think General Kelly would have stood by and let anyone call fallen Marines losers? Obviously, the answer to that is no. The next one here, which is um, the one from the ambassador, uh, which was Mr. McCourt was there the day trump's team called off the trip to the cemetery uh because of inclement weather and he he also uh did, did, you know said that the whole thing is garbage so so there's more and more people coming out and saying that this didn't happen that's not who he is does president trump say bombastic loud things yes of course he does that's that's who he is but he also cares and he cares deeply about this country that's that's been apparent from the very get-go whether you've got an issue with him on on a policy here or a policy there, the one thing that should be consistent across the board with most is his love for country, putting America first, his respect for military law enforcement, et cetera. Uh, you know, th- th- a lot of this is coming from how he has responded verbally on Twitter or whatnot to the, all the investigations, the impeachment, this, that, and the other, because intelligent FBI, you know, former agencies that I've worked with, all came out and allowed themselves to be politicized, got overly involved in stuff they shouldn't have been involved with, and he's pushing back because of that. There's, there's a lack of trust. Someone breaks your trust, you're going to be upset. You're going to say some things, and you're going to have some questions about how they do it. And, and that happened specific to every, you know, the, the investigation and the spying into his campaign. But, but outside of that, he has been a staunch supporter of the military, law enforcement, all, all of our national security apparatus. So it's just, it's funny that the Democrats continue to think, okay, we're just, we lied here, it didn't work, let's try lying again. Come up, someone come up with a new lie. Let's come up with a new lie, let's throw it out there. Uh, but people, it, it, it really did work for a long time. And it still does for some, but people are getting more awake, more alert to Democrats and the media and how they do things. And, I mean, you just can't say whatever you want anymore and expect people to listen. It just is not working that way as much as it used to, Dems. And, and you should have learned that through these last four years. Remarkably, it seems you haven't. But there's a good population of the country who, and I'm not talking about the, the GOP conservatives who were going to be conservatives no matter what. It's the ones that are fringe, that are more closer to the center, the, the independents and even some moderate Dems who are saying, Y'all screwed this up. You screwed it up. You've lied. You've you've endorsed violence. You've you've done so many things wrong, and the party is just broken. It is splintered. You've got the radical left, some terrified establishment Dems who are just trying to hold on to their job, don't want to speak up and push back against the radical left, and it's it's a disastrous thing. But it's everything that happens if and when President Trump wins in November, just like when he won in 2016. You guys have yourselves to thank for it because you pushed America right over to President Donald Trump and to the America First vision, to the law and order vision, to having strong economy, strong education, you know, having all of these things that you guys keep saying you want but have never done. And, and shot, man, you shot yourselves in the foot. All right, speaking of Trump, we'll get into his uh, Labor Day address some Q&As that he took on the other side of the break. Real quick, while we've got you, though, please go to DrewBerkwist.com each and every day. You can see it down there on the screen. We need your support there on the site as well. Tons of great content that you can read, stay up to date with from all sorts of partners, 
friends, other publications. You can also watch the show there uh, if you'd prefer to watch it there instead of he uh, here on YouTube. So tons, tons to, to take in there. Also, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Parlor if you have not already. You can see all those handles right down here. Or just go and search Drew Berquist or Real Drew Berquist. You'll find it. Also, if you've not subscribed already here on YouTube, you can do so right down here in the corner. We would greatly appreciate it. We'd love your viewership, and we love the comments and engagement, like we said, at the top of the show. All right. We'll get to Trump on the other side of the break. We've still got John Mills coming up. Lots to get to. Stick around. Mammoth Nation is the discount club for conservatives. You get great discounts on name brand products and services, and the proceeds help candidates who support the right causes. Plus, the money you save from just one purchase can pay for your entire membership. Liberal Democrats are destroying America, and we can't let Joe Biden be president. It's time to join the fight. Strength in numbers. We give the silent majority a resounding voice. Go to mammothnation.com and let's win this fight together. Welcome back, folks. This segment brought to you by Hero Soap Company. They've got awesome products. You've got to check them out. I'm going to keep telling you about them until you do. You can see their information right down there at the bottom of the screen. Veteran-owned company, guys, put a huge focus on getting homeless vets off the street by donating to Operation Finally Home. And their soap is its literally amazing. been using Peppermint Plus Cool right now myself. You can see some different options here. They've got tons of options on their site. It's all natural made with essential oils, none of the fragrance and chemicals that other competitor soap companies out there use and are, are harmful to you. So they're healthier, they're handmade, and they're done right here in the USA, out in Arizona. So veteran-owned, U.S.-made, they donate to, to homeless vets. I mean, what, what not to like, and it's amazing products. So head on over to HeroSumCompany.com and subscribe for a no-month contract, or excuse me, a no-contract monthly delivery of soap right to your front door. Again, it's HeroSumCompany.com. Let freedom clean. All right, everyone was on the trail yesterday. You know, you had Camp Cam in Milwaukee. Pence was in La Crosse. Biden was in Pennsylvania doing the stuff that we showed you earlier, which was kind of a disaster. And Trump, Trump gave a long speech. There's been lots of conversation. You know, you had a cost of coming out being mad that it was a, you know, more of a rally or this, that, and the other. But, but again, everyone's out campaigning right now. But he gave a long speech and really hit on Biden, hit on some, some key policy points for him heading into the election and hopefully beyond. Um, again, because of the length, we broke it down. Here, here's a couple snippets. Here's the first one, and we'll talk about it as we go, roll three. We'll continue to unleash American energy. We're number one in the world, and we're totally energy independent right now. And in 2021, we'll create 10 million jobs at least in the first 10 months. Joe Biden, the radical Socialist Democrats would immediately collapse the economy. If they got in, they would collapse it. You'll have a crash, the likes of which you've never seen before. Your stocks, your 401ks. Remember, it's the people that own these massive listed companies. A lot of people, rich people, not so rich people, and middle income people, and those stocks will crash like you've never seen before. The Biden plan begins with a $4 trillion tax hike. And that will end everything, including growth. There won't be growth. There'll be total contraction. Biden's also pledged to demolish the U.S. energy industry and implement the same policies causing blackouts in California. He wants to have things lit up with wind. Uh, he'll have to talk to China, Russia, uh, India, and lots of other countries, because they're not doing that. And if they're not doing it, uh, puts us at a tremendous economic disadvantage and it doesn't work. You take a look at the blackouts in California. It's really rather So he probably will talk to China because China Trump. definitely would love for Joe Biden to be president because uh, they know they can steamroll him. They can get away with more of what they're doing. So, so would the other nation states that are out there wanting to unseat us as the number one most badass country on the planet, which we still are. We're, we're pretty fragile right now, but we still are. But, you know, I mean, so good things, right? And, and, and Biden keeps talking about in all of his commercials and his appearances, I have a plan. There's no plan with Donald Trump, which is clearly not true by what has been seen and executed 
across the board. But he talks about this plan, and it's a disastrous plan. And by the way, even if he had a plan that was the most robust, amazing sounding thing, amazing looking on paper, just remember, he served in government for 47 years and has had a horrible track record of getting things done. Even folks on his own side have expressed lots of concerns about him. So just something to remember. But, you know, 10 million in jobs. The jobs report that just came out was very, very positive for President Trump. You know, and and you look at typical Democrat policies, the policies that Biden's talking about, and then you look at this young group of radical, progressive, socialist Democrats that are coming up and have a loud voice, not just in the Democrat Party, but specifically within the Biden campaign and would be within the Biden administration. So it's scary. And you see the stock crashes. You see all of that stuff. You see the energy issues being very, very real. Very, very real. They talk about it all the time. Guys, we're close. We're less than two months away from it becoming a reality if we don't get out there and vote. We don't choose freedom. We don't choose America first. If we don't do that, there's, there's going to be so many issues. They're innumerable. But <clears throat> I digress. So he, he, talked, he talked about that. He went on further about uh, you know, energy and, and what have you. But then he talked about ch- uh, China and Joe a little bit more. Here's, here's that roll four. The New York Times has just published an entire story on Biden's China sellouts, which is amazing for the New York Times. I appreciate that. In 2001, Biden said the United States welcomes the emergence of a prosperous, integrated China at the global stage because we expect this is going to be a China that plays by the rules. They didn't play by the rules. They didn't play by the rules. The World Trade Organization, one of the reasons it's so bad is that China didn't play by the rules. We did. We did, but their rules were easier because they're considered a developing nation. So they had a much lower standard. But even that, they didn't play by the rules. That's when they became a rocket ship. They were flatlined for years and years and years. Then they joined the World Trade Organization. And frankly, they cheated, okay? They cheated, I'll say it. What difference is it? I feel much differently. I feel I've made a great trade deal with China, great. And they're buying. You know why they're buying? Because they know I'm not happy. That's why they're buying. And I talk about it because today is Labor Day. It's a good time to talk about when we're being ripped off by countries, but nobody's even close to China. Biden cheered China's rise as a great power because great powers adhere to international norms in the areas of nonproliferation, human rights, and trade. Well, they didn't. They took advantage of stupid people. Stupid people. And Biden's a stupid person. You know that. You're not going to write it. But you know that. The cost of Biden's economic treachery was 60,000 shuttered American factories. And I hear this morning that the real number is probably 70,000. 70,000 shuttered American factories, and he's talking about how wonderful it is with China. Now, China's been very bad, on top of which we had the China plague sent to us, and other viruses, nothing near this area, but the swine. We had other viruses sent in over the years that came from China. I wonder why. If Biden wins, China wins, because China will own this country. If Biden wins, China will own this country, and hopefully you're not going to be able to find that out. It's the most important election in our history right now. Most important election in our history. Under my administration, we will make America into the manufacturing superpower of the world and we'll end our reliance on China once and for all. Whether it's decoupling or putting in massive tariffs like I've been doing already, we're going to end our reliance on China because we can't rely on China. And I don't want them building a military like they're building right now. They're using our money to build it. We'll manufacture our critical medical supplies in the United States. We'll create Made in America tax credits and bring our jobs back from China to the United States. And we'll impose tariffs on companies that desert America to create jobs in China and other countries. If they can't do it here, then let them pay a big tax to build it someplace else and send it into our country. We'll prohibit federal contracts from companies that outsource to China. And we'll hold China accountable for allowing the virus to spread around the world. Now you can understand why China would much rather see Sleepy Joe than Donald Trump. 
But as long as I'm president, we will never waver in our undying loyalty to the American worker and to our country as a whole. So happy Labor Day, everybody. Happy Labor Day, indeed. Not, I mean, what what not to like about that? I think, I think he hit on a lot, and obviously the people who just despise President Trump and loathe him as an individual are going to pick on everything he said throughout his forty some odd minutes of speaking yesterday. But yeah, I mean, and they're going to pick on the fact that he he said stupid people and Joe Biden's stupid. But you, I mean, deep down, you chuckle. If you didn't chuckle out loud, you kind of did inside, and you know it's true. It's not conventional for a president to say that kind of stuff, but but you know it's true. And China will. What's really true about this is China will. They're, they're they've already flexed their muscles so much here with dollars, with property, you know, buying up property, you know, their their cyber efforts on a daily basis that they're using to replicate and build their own tech over over back home in China. Their their ownership of companies, their ownership of Hollywood. I mean, the NBA. Like you see their hands everywhere. And then there's lots of spots that you don't see them, but they are there. And you see how they're trying to, to spread their influence here and how much easier it would be with someone like Joe Biden who needs notes to go to the bathroom. It's, it's just going to be a disaster, folks. Just the, the way that China, Russia, Iran, several other countries that we need to be extremely concerned about. We're so concerned right now about stuff that's happening in the streets here because it shouldn't be happening and we should be concerned about it. But because we're a shiny ball country, we always focus on one thing at a time and just really focus in on that. We've got all this other stuff happening around the world. There are still extremist groups and terrorist groups who want to do us harm and our partners harm. There are state actors like China and Russia that want nothing more than for us to crumble, and they are actively participating in this division that we're seeing and feeling across the country. And you need someone who will push back with a peace through strength model running your government as the commander in chief, as the leader of the free world, saying, we will help you here, but we're not going to put up with this. You do this. There's going to be consequences. Joe Biden's not that guy. China knows that. Trump has done a very good job with them. Uh, it's again, not all of its establishment or traditional ways of doing it, but that's good. That's okay. That's why he's here. That's why president Trump was elected because we needed something like that as a country like him or not, even for you Democrats, America needed this. And you can say, well, there's stuff burning in the streets. There's this, that, and there is, it's awful right now. But at the same time, we needed this shakeup because we were literally going back and forth from political family to political family on the other side of the aisle, establishment politician to establishment politician. And it was just a game going nowhere. We need, we need, we needed some change. If nothing else, 2016 shook up politics and said, anyone can come in and win. There's fringe candidates that can come in and win. It's, you know, Hillary Clinton, who a lot of people just thought would be the shoe in victor is still not the victor. She thinks she is, and she's still mad about it, but there's a reason all this happened and you need to pay attention to that. But this was the best part of the day. There, there's the Q&A conversations going back and forth. And Ryan Mason, who's from Reuters, was, was asking his question of President Trump. And, and Trump got flustered because of, of Mason's mask and the volume. You can take a look, Roll 5. Mr. President, uh, the issue of what happened when you were in France continues to be a story. You're going to have to take that off, please. Just, you can take I'll, it off. You're, you're, how, how many feet are you away? I'll speak a lot louder. Well, if you don't take it off, you're very muffled. So if you would take it off, it would be a lot easier. I'll, I'll just speak a lot louder. Is that better? It's better. Yeah, Mr. it's Mr. better. Mr. President. <laughs> I mean, again, it's like the, the Biden thing at the beginning of the show, being outside. You guys are socially distanced. If you, if you have to wear it going through security, getting into the facility, getting to your seat, whatever, kind of like restaurants right now, I think that's silly too. Um, you know, you, you can't spread your germs in a restaurant until you get to the table. Then you're good to go, spread away, and, and, and everything is fine and dandy. But here, you're outdoors, socially distanced. They've got these reporters spread out. You've got plenty of distance between you and Trump. Lord knows he doesn't want to be that close to you in the first place. And then you're wearing this mask all for, for narrative reasons. All for politics because it goes with what you're pushing. 
and the gotcha questions that you're you're trying to ask on a routine day day to day basis where you try to get President Trump to, to slip up and stumble. But I just love how he was visibly frustrated. You know, eventually he's like, all right, fine, it's better. It's like, like he, he was like, I'm not going to have this fight. I'm not going to die on this hill. But it's, to me, when you're outside, if you were in the press room and it's tighter, it's more confined, all right, whatever. I still I still think it's politics. It's this, but, but you're outside. Just take the darn thing off. Like, just... Come on, do better. Hashtag do better, people. All right, moving on. Uh, we're going to take a break, but when we come back, retired U.S. Army Colonel John Mills is going to join us to talk about voter integrity, the upcoming election. It's a big issue, folks. Lots to be paying attention to. We'll get to it on the other side. Stick around. Do you love freedom? Do you love being clean? Then you'll love Hero Soap Company, made in the USA, chemical and fragrance free. A portion of each purchase donated to veteran and first responder charities. Initial subscription purchase is matched bar for bar and sent overseas to deploy troops. Let freedom clean, Hero Soap Company. Welcome back, guys. We've talked a lot about election concerns over fraud, concerns about a, a, a number of things as it pertains to the election. That's just less than two months away now. Joining us to to bring a little bit more wisdom to it, though, probably than I can offer you, is retired U.S. Army Colonel John Mills. John, good to see you. Thank you for having me on, Drew. It's an honor to be with you. Thank you. Well, thank you for your service first and foremost. We love having you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it, Drew. Thank you for your service. Absolutely. Been Absolutely. Well, it's it's good to have it's good to have you here. You you bring a real interesting perspective to this. Obviously, lots of concerns. You started a nonpartisan task force over election integrity uh, a, a ways back, which is scaled now into a national one. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but where do we really and this is a very broad question i get it, and then we'll get into specifics but where do we as u.s citizens really need to be concerned about our elections as we head into perhaps the biggest election we've we've seen in our lifetime if not ever oh uh, yeah thank you drew i think one of the most important things is an involved citizenry everybody assumes somebody is taking care of the mechanics of an election behind the counter and uh, yes, absolutely. Unfortunately, they are. Uh, this my my study and my interest started with Virginia, and every state is run differently and has different peculiarities here. But the common denominator across all is an involved citizenry. And again, I'm I'm doing this nonpartisan, but there is a, a grotesque imbalance between one side and the other. Who becomes on day of election, actually for the voter registration process, who volunteers to act as a, a sworn election officials. That's critical, sworn election officials. Uh, in Virginia, a, a grotesque imbalance uh, uh, between one side and the other. And uh, if, that's, uh, uh, if that's what's happening, uh, that is gonna affect the outcome of the election because there's a lot of little details that sworn election officials have judgment, power, and authority over. And if you're not if you're not there as an involved citizen, yes, somebody is going to take care of the election for you. Huh. And 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 what what are some of the numbers with that? And it doesn't have to be exactly precise, but like speaking of Virginia, where you've got lots of data, how big of a swing is there between the two sides? Yeah. So for sworn election officials, I'm, I'm being a little bit generous here. I'd say it's 70 percent on the Democrat, 30 percent on the Republican. And that's not uh, we can talk later about the fraudulent voting registration, which is we're estimating at 12 percent can small C conservatively. But, yeah, it's a 70 30 split. And so uh, those on the Republican or the conservative or what do you want to call it? Uh, we're not a 70 30 state in Virginia, but. That's essentially what's going on. And, and election officials, even Democrats, they are desperate to get Republicans to volunteer to be, because it is, you, you have to declare, but the, the reality is for whatever 
reason uh, uh, Republicans and conservatives are not showing up as sworn election officials. And that's just, uh, you know, you, you get you get what happens when when that's what happens. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, that is that is and should be concerning to people out there. And it should be encouraging for folks to, as you said, get involved and, and, and be an involved citizen because there's so much on the line in all of these, you know, it's every year there's an election we hear it's the most important election ever. I do think that this one coming up in November fits the bill, but uh, but but they're all important and and we do need to be more important. Uh, that's one stat though that you, you you talk about there, but there was another one that I thought was very interesting as it pertains to Virginia as well, I believe, and that was the 12% voters um, that you referenced in an article and you, you did in a recent interview with, with our colleague, Rob Manus. What, what were your findings in terms of votes? You know, it was registered voters, if I'm not mistaken, correct, that were that are unregistered, yeah. excuse me, that accounted for 12%? Uh, no, uh, inside the wire, as registered voters, 12% are unlawful. And the way we, we uh, essentially rolled back the tape and figured this out here, um, it is uh, the juries in the state of Virginia draw primarily from the, uh, from the voting of, of those who are registered as voters here. Uh, actually, uh, but you all do also have to fill out forms. I got, I got curiously just another update here and you have to declare on the form several things. Are you a lawful US citizen? But what we did is very simple and after the fall election of 2019, I said, this just doesn't make sense. A candidate I strongly supported was a remarkable candidate, ran it flawlessly, earned more votes than any person in his party ever earned, and they had held the seat, still lost significantly. I said, this is not, something is not making sense here. So I went in and uh, to the court system and I FOIA'd. Freedom of Information Act, and I encourage all citizens, citizens to passionately assert FOIA authorities at the at the federal and state and local levels here. So the court system gave me the data uh, on uh, those who rejected, and this is the key element, those who were rejected. There's 20 different categories uh, for jury duty, but if you add on, add up just three, well, actually four of them, and uh, those are not a U.S. citizen. Okay, well, how could somebody not be a U.S. citizen if they're on the voting roll? But they are. Right. So not U.S. citizen, don't speak English. Well, uh, that doesn't really make sense. If you're a naturalized citizen, you actually have to, that's, that's a requirement, you have to speak English. Uh, felon, and there's also uh, a one, uh, one in four did not even respond uh, uh, to the questionnaires. And not responding to jury duty is in itself uh, I, I'm not sure it appears to be a misdemeanor, but it is uh, on, on the forms uh, portrayed as a as a crime in Virginia. So we have a huge number. They're not even responding. And you just ax, extrapolate numerator, numerator over denominator here. And uh, uh, you add these up. Conservative number, 12 percent unlawful on the voting rolls that are registered. Um, and there's no live database that's queried. The 2018 annual report on voting in Virginia put out by the Department of Elections, although in response to uh, the articles, they, they use that as, as a, essentially a justification for their great performance. But if you, if you actually read the report, uh, that is, a, that is a, a failing grade report. I'm sorry, that is not a positive report. So the, the, the Department of Elections holds up an annual report saying how good they are uh, if you actually read the report uh, i would have to give that a failing grade yeah yeah well it's just terrifying to see all of that and you know what happens and you said it earlier every state's different and you know some form of of this is happening in every state there's other issues that happen in different states lots of stuff though that should not be happening and and stuff that that certainly can swing elections like the one that you were talking about there where it just doesn't all add up and make sense well i've talked a lot about on the show how other governments are going to interfere. They have before. They will again. So do we. Like, this is just what big state actors do. What actors, though, you know, and, and obviously we know that, that China and Russia, you've got Soros that you've referenced as well involved in this one. Who, who do we need to be most concerned about and who does it benefit the most? Yeah, it's uh, not even close. Uh, there is Chinese money in the state elections here. I don't want to... 
I want to be a little careful here because these groups are very feisty and will come after you here. But essentially, there was a new Virginia majority campaign started in 2008 by one side. However, if you start doing very simple linkages and looking at which websites are linked to which, web, uh, which websites, there's several road, open road, road to this, road to that foundations, which are funded by the communist Chinese here. This is not a joke. We're not being silly here. This is very serious. So when it comes to foreign influence in elections, the Chinese are extremely involved. And everybody's you got some folks running around saying Russia, Russia, Russia. Um, yeah, Putin is a problem. Xi, Xi is a mortal threat. For every dollar that the Russians spend, China spends 11. Okay, so it's not even close on who's doing the election uh, meddling and, and uh, influence. I would say in order, it is essentially $11 uh, for every, every, every dollar Russia spent is China. Three to four dollars is Soros, uh, and there's also other domestic monies and international monies, and then Russia. So it's definitely China and Soros. Those are the ones. And um, Virginia is under the Vir uh, uh, Voting Rights Act of '65. That that means it's under has supposed to be under special uh, scrutiny by the Department of Justice. As the black population evolves on on their support, once again their votes are getting stolen. And so I think it's extremely grave and important. So Department of Justice needs to take action and uh, uh, get involved here. And this is as simple as the attorney general turning around to his U.S. attorney for Virginia and say, look at this. Yeah. And these numbers are grotesque in, in Virginia. Foreign money, communist Chinese money, very, very poorly written uh, a voter ID law. And that's why everybody who shouts voter ID, you better get it right because the, the the voter id law in virginia was a disaster made it far easy to fraudulently register yeah well i don't understand too with again i i get i don't like it but i get just being an intel officer how countries play in, in elections that's it's gonna happen no, no matter what that's anyone says you know 2016 there was tons of outrage but and 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 for specific reasons sure but but the, no one should have been surprised that people were meddling with our elections and trying to have some some form of a voice in it. But but the Soros piece, I I, I just don't understand. And, and you you said it like the DOJ needs to do something. Something needs to be done. But I see it all the time on our show, on our site, people asking why nothing's being done about Soros. And I know this is not what we're talking about today, but why is nothing being done about Soros? You know, again, as you know from the intel community and the law enforcement community, uh, the Title X DOD is a little bit different, but intelligence operations and law enforcement operations are racked and stacked by named operations. One of the main reasons is for cost accounting purposes and reports back to Congress, and they're triaged and prioritized. So all it takes is the Attorney General to say, Operation Umptyump is now the priority. Voom, they just move it up and they fall. It's Everything's triaged and uh, uh, prioritized. Now, about uh, a month and a half ago, uh, the attorney general did, did put China as number one. But this has been a real problem is in the intel side of the house, on the law enforcement side of the house, China was not getting, although they were grotesquely outspending everybody else, they were not being put down as the priority. That has happened. That massively changes the priority of intel and law enforcement activities here. And Soros, uh, I would say there's a very powerful tool called the Foreign Agent Registration Act, which has been around since the 30s, has been modified several times, but is an extremely powerful tool. And I think Soros, uh, I, I think he would meet the bar. There is an internal legal review, but I think he would absolutely meet and surpass the bar to be declared and required to, to register under the Foreign Agent Registration Act, just like a number of other Chinese activities should be uh, in the United States. Wow. Well, there's just there's a ton going on. We're going to have to have you back on just to talk more about this and get even further into the weeds on it, because I know that the listeners uh, are, are dying to know more. They're curious. Uh, and as I said, I, I told you, folks, he knows a lot more about it than I do. Very smart guy. Sir, thank you so much again for your service and for being here today. Thank you, Drew. It's an honor. I look forward to talking to you again. Take care. You got it. 
All right, for the rest of you, stick around for ha- uh, after hours. If, uh, if, if, if you can't, that's fine. If you're listening to the, the podcast, you can just stay right here. It'll play right in. Uh, but for those of you who are looking for it, just head on over to YouTube, and you'll find it there in the after hours segment. Again, appreciate your viewership today. Thanks for joining us. Two more great shows planned for the rest of the week. Some great ones already stacking up for next week. And remember, with all this craziness going on out there, it's important that we have our own ideas, our own policies, our own way of looking at the world, and we discuss it. We do it fairly. But this is my show. I hope you enjoy it.